I think um, it's been a big year for Sandstorm. We've we've dramatically increased the size of our company. We've we've acquired uh, a number of our competitors. Uh, had to take on some debt to do it, and uh, we built a, a much bigger, much more diversified, stronger company with more cash flow. And and so it's been a lot of work. A lot. Of, you probably see the bags under my eyes. It's been. Um, I've been up at 4:30 every day uh, this week, just working, and, um, and the work continues. But it's been a, been a great year. Uh, we've got a, a good vision for where we're going with the business, and we're we're really excited about it. Um, it's unfortunate that you, we do all of these tremendous things and build this great business, and and then have it also happen to be at the exact same time where the entire world is coalescing around the greatest interest rate height, <laughs> rate height cycle ever <laughs> and the collapsing of stock markets and uh, you know, funds having to liquidate. And so, you know, the share price hasn't performed well and, and um, you know, that's been frustrating for me. But, um, but I'm really, really proud of the base that we've built. I'm really proud of the company that we've built. I'm really excited about the vision and the screen energy transition that you just mentioned. And, um, and you might wonder, well, what the heck does a gold royalty company have to do with the green energy transition? That's those, those seem like uh, apples and oranges. But um, I'm a big believer that the greatest business opportunity of our generation is going to be the fact that the entire world needs to decarbonize, and uh, the climate change is more of an existential threat than even we most people think it is whatever scenario people have built in their heads as to how bad climate change is going to be i think it's going to be worse whatever more whatever financial scenario they have built in their heads as to how it's going to hurt our economies i think it's going to hurt our economies worse in terms of whatever scenario you built in your head as to how it's going to affect humanity i think the eventual uh, scenario that, that will play out will be worse and um, being a mining guy in the mining industry, I know that the metals that are required for this green energy transition, they're not available. The mine, there are not enough mines, there are not enough copper mines, there are not enough nickel mines to do the transition that we need to do as a world to make the windmills, to make the solar panels, to make the electric cars. And um, there's, we're, we're within five years of the massive um, deficit of critical minerals to allow this uh, green energy transition. I'm, I'm actually going to COP27 next week in Egypt uh, with all the governments of the world to um, figure out frameworks for dealing with climate change. And as a mining guy, I'm, I'm the person there pounding the table going, you don't understand all of these plans that you're making. We don't have the metals. They don't, <laughs> they're not ready. It, it takes, it. when I first got into the mining business, it took, you know, five years from the time that you put a drill hole into the ground to the time you can get a mine up and running. Well, that takes 15 years now. And it, it should take 15 years because we need to properly and methodically evaluate these properties and, and make sure that we're doing right by the environment and the communities and as to how we develop them. And it should take that long. But the problem now that we have is there aren't enough mines known and ready to be developed that are gonna be able to produce the metals for this energy transition. It just it isn't gonna happen. And so so what does a gold royalty company have to do with the green energy transition? It, it, well, it just so happens that a lot of the world's best deposits of things like copper, nickel, and other metals, typically come with gold as a byproduct in those deposits. So when we have the perfect model, the streaming and royalty model, to finance the generation and completion of those projects where we can step in and say here's here's half a billion dollars go build that money the world needs it but we want all the gold as you mine it and uh, that comes back to us so we stay a pure play streaming and royalty company making lots of money off of the gold theme which i believe the gold fundamentals have really never been stronger in the long term here look that's that's the million dollar question i, I don't know the answer to that unfortunately i mean COP27 is, is a good start. I'll be there. Um, the World Economic Forum is a really good uh, forum that brings in, I mean, one of the problems in the world that we have right now is that that people in the political spectrum don't talk to each other. Left wing hates the right wing and right wing hates the left wing. And, you know, environmentalists hate 
uh, industry and industry hates environmentalists and, and that's got to stop and, and there needs to be a forum where people all get into the same room. I, mean, I, I remember one time many years ago I was in China, at the Great Wall of China at a, a conference and uh, I had been put at a table with the CEO of um, WWF, in one of the Scandinavian WWF countries and and I asked her what she did, and she's like, oh, I'm the CEO of WWF. And she asked me what I did, and I said, I'm the CEO of a mining company. And she like, was aghast, and she looked like she had seen the devil face to face by looking at me. And uh, but by putting us in a room together, she could understand that I actually do have a heart for the environment the same way that she does. It's just that I know that there's there's a business side to things, and there's an economic side to things, and the world needs to move forward at least to do it thoughtfully and methodically and uh, we need environmentalists in the room not thinking that we're evil and we need to be in the room not thinking that they're the enemy and we need to work together and so I, do, I don't have the answer to your question but we need a coalescence of minds from all political spectrums from all people getting into the room solving this problem because it's huge and it's not going to be solved easily and it's not going to be solved in time. Because I, I do believe that, that the green energy transition is so big and the opportunity is so massive and the world has such a big problem that needs to solve that Sandstorm needs to get bigger to do that. And we can make lots of money for our shareholders if we can take advantage of that and be the company that does that. There will have to be more equity financing in the, financings in the future. But I have a feeling if I change the way I think about shareholders uh, and, and how I relate to them, that I think that there will be fewer shareholders that want to sell their shares and fewer shareholders that uh, try to front run a financing because the demand for those financings, I'm guessing, will be much, much higher than they were in the past. So that I can look at the list of all the people who went into that that financing and say, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out because we don't need your money. And so the people who tried to front run the financing, the shareholders who are acting badly and trying to hurt all the other shareholders, they're gonna be the ones that get hurt because they'll have sold their shares, they won't get to buy shares in the new financing, and the share price will take off. And, and that's how I plan on doing things going forward.